guys! I am so excited to get to talk to you today a little bit about traveling and specifically about a trip that I took to Peru a couple years ago. I wanted to share with you some of my advice when it comes to traveling internationally as well as tell you a little bit about my experiences in Peru and what it was like there. We went to several different cities in Peru. We started out in Lima. We visited a lot of religious historical sites which was really interesting for me being a Christian to kind of see how Christianity played a role in the colonization of Peru. We went to these catacombs. It was like Pirates of the Caribbean in real life. From Lima we traveled to Cusco, Peru. Cusco is very tourist oriented so I felt very safe. We just spent a lot of time in Cusco visiting some historical sites in the city and then the next day we drove for probably two or three hours and just stopped at ruins and sites along the way. One of my favorite places outside of Cusco was called Urubamba. We walked to the top of the ruins and just looked out over the sacred valley and it was so gorgeous. It was beautiful. Of course, while we were in Peru, we visited Machu Picchu. What can be said about Machu Picchu? It is unreal. We took a train from this little town that I loved, Ollante Tambo. I don't know if I said that right. So we took a train from Ollante Tambo. They reminded me of like Harry Potter. Machu Picchu is visited by millions of people every year. It's like Disneyland. So they shuttle you up from Aguas Calientes on a bus up to Machu Picchu. So we caught the earliest bus of the day, which was probably like five something in the morning. Oh, what a struggle for me. And because it was dark, I didn't, I couldn't really see out the window um, as we were driving up. On the way down, when we rode the bus back, I could see perfectly clearly out the window and those bus drivers get so close to the edge and there's no railing or anything and the roads are super narrow. It was pretty crazy. The first day, we were in the first group to hike up Huayna Picchu, which is the mountain behind the ruins. The view from the top of Huayna Picchu is unparalleled. If you go to Machu Picchu, you have to hike Huayna Picchu. It was so crazy to learn from the tour guides there how prosperous the people were and how smart they were. It was so cool to get to visit a place that is so ancient and iconic and you feel so small in a place like that. It's, it's just amazing. My favorite part of the trip by far was to the Amazon in Iquitos, Peru. We took a boat ride from Iquitos to this lodge in the Amazon. And then from there, the only way to get anywhere was by boat. We took a boat to a village that was nearby and I remember we got off the boat and all the kids from the village came running and they were all carrying these like wild animals. Everyone else in our group got off the boat and were like taking pictures of the kids and stuff and I went straight to the kid with the sloth and I was just like, can I hold it? He handed it to me and I held it and it was just like, my dreams came true. It was so cute. Just basked in its slothfulness. It was great. People, if you see the sloth, you, you gotta do it. You gotta grab it. So we spent a little bit of time there with the kids. There was one little boy. His name was Max. He was so cute. He stayed by my side the whole time we were there and I'll never forget him. Visiting a village like that and seeing the way that people live, it opened my eyes to how blessed that I am to have so much in my life. We take so much for granted. When you travel to places like that, it opens your heart a lot. And I hope that one day I can go back and see them again. We were able to take a couple excursions out on the Amazon River on the boat. We got to see pink dolphins. We also went fishing for piranhas. Y'all know I love my Disney movies. Y'all know I love Tarzan, so you better believe I was the first one in that boat. I will admit, I was the only person on the boat to catch Piranha. I took it back with me to the lodge and I went to the cook and she fried it up for me and I had it for dinner. It's so big. So what's the technique, Kaylee? Uh, patience. Patience, just wait around, you know. We also visited this little zoo that they had. <laughs> They had this sloth there. And here I am, all confident, because the day before, I had held a sloth and it was like this spiritual experience, thinking that it's gonna be the same as the other sloth. I'm like, oh, can I hold it? They hand me the sloth and the thing tries to kill me. It like comes at me with its claws and just whoosh, hits me in the head, latches onto my hair, latches onto my neck, and they like could not get the sloth off of me. And I had bruises for weeks from this sloth. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> it must have just 
been a sad sloth. It just wasn't loved because I have a way with the creatures. <gasps> oh my gosh, it's so... <laughs> it's under the title of what your, what your beautiful assistant had to do. <laughs> Snake attacks, human. This is terrifying. <laughs> Smile like you're happy. <laughs> I can't, I'm like... Oh. Back. All my fears. Oh, it's coming to your head. <laughs> How was the experience, Haley? That was the scariest thing in my life. You know how you see like ants at home and it's like, oh, the ants, oh, you know, not a big deal. When the Amazon, it's like ants. They're so big. We had a guide while we were in the Amazon. His name was Yako and he grew up in the Amazon. He was the coolest guy ever. He took us on this excursion through the Amazon rainforest. It was just amazing to see these creatures that were larger than life. I remember butterflies flew by and they were like the size of birds. They were bigger than my head. It was so cool. They also had a pet tarantula that lived on the door to the dining room, so you had to touch the door to walk into the dining room. Her name was Margarita. I'm sure she was a nice tarantula, but she freaked me out. We also visited a village where they had a traditional Incan home that you could go in. Inside this home, they had tons and tons of guinea pigs. This is so cool. You guys have pet guinea pigs. Oh, they're so cute. Look at them. And they proceeded to tell us that they eat them. Every restaurant you go to, you can order guinea pig. You can also order alpaca. They're everywhere. They're so cute. I got to hold a baby one. Would I ever order alpaca off the menu? No. But if you want to have a full cultural experience, you totally can do that. You have to try this soda called Inca Cola. I had ceviche. I really liked that. And quinoa actually comes from Peru. It's grown there everywhere. There's fields everywhere. They're beautiful red and purple fields. So I ordered a lot of dishes that had quinoa in it. It's okay to eat local foods when you travel. You just have to be careful about where you get it from and what kinds of meat you eat. I typically try to avoid eating a lot of meat. Um, I do eat fish while I travel, but there was one time on this trip that I ate a meat pie and I got food poisoning. I got so sick. We called it Machu Picchu's Revenge. Misery, complete misery. It's not even worth it, so just be careful what you eat. <laughs> I would love to go back. I loved visiting Peru and it was so much fun. I loved all of the people that I met there. All of the guides that we had at every place were so knowledgeable and so kind and I will never forget them. They were the nicest people. Thank you so much for watching guys. If you have any more questions about traveling or other places, if you've traveled to Peru and you want to share what you did or how you felt or what you ate or how many piranhas you caught, go ahead and comment below or tweet at me at Haley Gardner. I'd love to hear from you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Good night, everybody. But basically, they're like a tinted lip balm, which is like my two favorite things combined. They're actually like a lip stain as well. So in the summer, it's really awesome because even though it's hot and like everything else sweats, my lips still have color. <laughs>